Hi, I wanted to show you today how to do a tessellation inspired by the work by M.C. Escher. M.C. Escher was a mathematician who also was a graphic designer, and he is basically invented tessellations using um, reflection, rotation, and other mathematical concepts. These are some of his here, using imagery. This has been done all over the world, particularly by the Moors in Spain and in Islamic art, but those tessellations are always non-representational or the closest thing you might find them to look like would be uh, perhaps stars, some geometric forms. They don't do representative imagery. And M.C. Escher wanted to try doing the same thing but with images. And these are some of his works that you can see he does an image and he has it fit into itself and repeat. So how did he do that? The first one we're gonna start with, a very simple one, it's called the translation tessellation. And here's an example done with this piece that is placed and drawn over repeatedly based on the square, on a grid. So we're gonna do the same thing. So how are we gonna start? First of all, you're gonna go through your recycling bin and get an old cereal box. You'll measure on it using your ruler. The tools you're gonna to need to get started, ruler, scissors, pencil, tape. And you'll measure five centimeters by five centimeters. So you can do a couple in case one doesn't go well. Do more than one. And what I do is I, I put dots at every five centimeters. And I connect the dots as straight as I can to make a straight line. I tend to try and use pencil rather than marker because it's more forgiving. If I make a mistake, I can erase it. If I use Sharpie, I can't remove it. It doesn't matter when you're doing the cardboard, but if you have extra lines that you don't need, they can, be, they can make it confusing. If you don't have an old cereal box, you can use an index card or anything a little bit stiffer than, uh, than the paper in your sketchbook because it's hard to use as a template. So here's my two by two centimeter square. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw on it two places. And at this point, we're gonna swing around so you can see over my shoulder what I'm doing. So I decided for this one that I would do this kind of shape here. I'm doing it in pencil first so that I can make sure that it's correct, but I know that'll be hard for you to see at home. So once you're happy with the shape, you can do it with pen. And this is called a translation tessellation because it simply slides along the page. It doesn't rotate or do anything else. So after I draw that, I cut it out and I cut extra squares in case I don't like my shape. I can do more than one. Cut out my piece and I slide it to the other side, just straight across. And I make sure that it's lined up and I tape it into place. I do the same thing, that's not quite tight. Very important that everything's precise. So your square has to be a square, it can't be off, and your cuts have to marry and be attached properly. Because if anything isn't lined up, you will pay for it later when your design doesn't match up. So this is still crooked, I can see, not quite tight. And I'll do this little shape at the bottom, it looks a little bit like a mitten. And that one gets slid to the top. Don't worry if you have trouble following the verbal and visual directions because I've actually typed this up and have a handout for you. So if you're more of a person that likes to read it and go over it and follow it step by step by reading, you have that as well as this video. So you have two ways to review this at home and do it. So I've moved this to the top. I just slide it up. Another mitten shape, easier said than done. If you want, you can practice on the bigger size 
The first one I did was three centimeters by three centimeters. This is three by three. It's a little bit easier to handle for my big and clumsy hands, but you won't fit as many in your sketchbook. So that's why we're doing the smaller one. So there's my shape that I'm going to see how it works. So before I even draw my grid, I'm just gonna fool around with this on the paper and just see what I get, how it fits into each other. So I draw around it because now I have a template. Oops, try not to move it. You don't need to tape it, just hold it still. And I hope you can see well, because it is pencil. I know that's not as easy to see as marker. And I slide it and match it right up and draw the next one. And that is why it's called a translation tessellation, because you just slide it across. We will look at other tessellations later that are reflections. So a reflection is, as you imagine, it's flipped over and rotation. Those are two other kinds of tessellations we'll learn, but we'll start with the translation, which is the simplest. So here's my first row. And certainly in the first row, we can see that it fits pretty well together even before I've drawn a grid. Now I'm gonna try the next row and see that it fits. But before I go through the trouble of doing my good copy, I wanna make sure that it's at least working. And the other reason for doing this is I'm going to try turning it different ways and see what it looks like, because it could be anything. So I could keep going, but I can see that this works. So I'm going to look at it different ways and see if it reminds me of anything. This way, it almost looks like it could be a dragon, a happy dragon. There's his wing, there's his feet, there's his back foot. We'll do something different to make that his tail. What do you think? Does he look like a dragon? This one? Here's my dragon. It's written in pen so it's easier to see. That's his tail. So that would be one possibility. I could see a dragon. If I turn it this way, this looks like a bird's beak. So if I do this, do a little bird, and this could be his wing, and that could be his tail. This would just end up being sky, let's say back here. So I could see a bird, I could see a dragon. Hmm. I feel like this is the shape of something. Oh, it's a sea turtle. Yeah, those are his flippers. There's his shell, there's his tail, those are his other flippers. And that's the sea turtle. And that's all from my basic shape of this. So I would ask at home that you don't jump at the first thing that comes to your mind when you're turning it around. Do what I did and try a few different ideas. See what you could see, what you could see in that basic shape because that'll be very interesting. Now, if I wanted to do something like MC Escher, I could have fun with my sea turtle and my bird because he did a series called Sky and Water, which I know I bookmarked, so let's find it. My book is so well loved that it is falling apart. So, Lucht and Water, excuse my German. So, the fish are in the water and they turn into birds in the sky. You could see where my bird and my sea turtle. Okay, right now it looks like my sea turtle is eating my bird, but I could play with that and certainly create something where one changes into the other, which would be fun, rather than just having the same object. In this case, a fish. It's a blue fish and a yellow fish. These ones would be blue if I finish coloring it in. So the next part, you've done your square, you've played with your square, you've done a few designs of your square, and the next part is to draw your grid. Here's another version where I did a horse. I'll make it dark so you can see it. Because I know uh, it's hard to see otherwise. There's a kind of a funny horse with the same shape. Okay, so how do we draw a grid? And there's a finished grid. Again, start with pencil. 
If you're using Sharpie like I was, protect the table. That's why I have several pieces of paper because it bleeds through. So using your ruler, I think I've lost my pencil, so I'll use a pen. I it rolled under the table. I'm going to draw a line every five centimeters. So there's five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to do the same at the top. And make sure that you start the same way. So I'm not going to flip my ruler. I'm going to make sure it's lined up and I'm going to start in the same place. Here, not here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And as I said before, really important, the measurements have to be precise. If you're sloppy or loosey-goosey about your measurements, you're going to find it very frustrating later when things don't fit properly. And I'll do the same thing on this side. 5, 10, 15, 20. And then I would simply connect the lines. Do it in pencil. I'm doing it in pen so you can see it. But the reason you're going to do it in pencil is I'll show you momentarily. You want to be able to erase the grid so you can color it in. So if you have this grid in marker, you won't be able to erase it, and that will be really frustrating. But this way it's easier for you to see it. So imagining that this was my good copy, and imagining that this was in pencil, like this one, which is in pencil, I can now take my shape, and I decided that I guess I would do it this way as a bird and that way as a turtle. If you were with me, I would ask you to vote and tell me which way to do it, but I'll have to decide all by myself. But the first step will be to draw this. Again, I'm using pens so that you can see it at home easily, but do it in pencil. Because if you make a mistake, you can erase it. Then you can be more precise with it afterwards. So I'm going to go around the template. And really, it doesn't matter where you start, right? I just want to line it up with the square on your grid. If you did it properly, you could start in the middle, the bottom, the top. It's all going to fit. Okay, I won't do the whole thing because I think you understand it by now. I simply have to decide how I'm going to design this. Is it going to be the turtle? That would be his head. Or is it going to be the bird? And that's his wing. If I do the bird, again, I would do this in pencil first. That could be... I have to decide. This could be a second wing. And that could be his foot. I might play with that. So that's why I would do it in pencil first, because I would decide what works better. And then the last step would be to color it in. And you have options here. You could use colored pencil, like I did with this guy, depending what you have at home. If you have colored pencils, you could use colored pencils. And if you have watercolor, you can use watercolor. Again, protect the table so mom doesn't flip out. Sorry about that, my Instant Pot is telling me that it's ready. I don't know if it's gonna stop or it's gonna keep doing that, but we'll just finish this. And, um, Again, I would probably test in my sketchbook to see what colors I like before doing it on the final copy. But again, this is just a demo for you. So remember that when you're using watercolor, that colors that are beside each other in the color wheel, like yellow, orange, and red, mix nicely. But if I were to add purple, which is across the color wheel, if you remember your basic color theory, you'll know that I'm going to get brown. But if I put too much, it would be better using a small brush, but sometimes you can make an accident that really looks nice. So you could have some fun with it and see. Because I don't have a Kleenex with me. But if I did, and I felt that it was wrong, I would just dab it up. But if I don't have a Kleenex with me, and I make a whoops, and my Instant Pot is beeping, I'll just finish it up so that I can stop the annoying noise, and this video will be finished. Thanks for watching! See you in class.